Urban gardening is uh, basically the idea of uh, being able to grow some of our fresh uh, fruits and veggies and herbs right around our house in a balcony, on a terrace, front yard, backyard, it could be even a windowsill. It could also be some growing some uh, plants that help us indoors, for example air purifying plants that take, take away the toxins in the air around us. So all of this I would call this as urban gardening. One of the things I used to do as a farmer from when I used to grow on the land, we used to deliver veggies to our clients uh, directly in the city. And soon I realized that the urban consumer is very disconnected with the food. What that disconnect means is that that consumer doesn't know who, the, who is growing our food, how it's being grown and where it's being grown. When, when you don't know the answers to these three questions, we, we lose the connection with the food. And that's why all these problems that we are facing uh, with uh, the chemicals and poisons in our food is happening. The other reason is that uh, I also learned very quickly that uh, fresh salads and greens and most veggies will lose about half of their nutrition within about 24 hours. So regardless of how it's grown, whether organically or chemically, the freshness component is very important. And that's why the, the proximity of it, the closer to us is so important. And anybody, a lot of our clients and myself, once we have started growing our own food and when you harvest something fresh and eat it, you feel that difference. The difference in flavor and taste is nothing but the freshness. The, the time from harvest to our, to our mouth. Now, of course, you have to work with your own space. We have, we have people growing, clients uh, who are growing in balconies, very small balconies. Uh, some people who have just a windowsill with some sunlight on it and uh, some people who have large terraces and a lot of people in urban spaces nowadays what they have is um, it's just empty plots. We, we, like a lot of land is being converted from agricultural land to, to plots. So, so it, it ranges. If you have just a balcony you can grow maybe five pots of palak, dhania, methi like a range of greens or herbs. That, that's probably the limit you can grow. But if you have a terrace, you can grow some more like bangan, bangan, cauliflower, cabbage, your own tomatoes. All of that can be grown. And uh, in the winter season, you can grow your root crops, your lettuces, your broccoli, everything. Can, pretty much the whole range of veggies can grow. Even fruit trees can grow. Uh, the main criteria is the sunlight. Typical uh, gardens that we have uh, helped clients with, uh, they range from about 100 to 200 square feet of growing space. Uh, for about that much of a garden, you need to give about 15 minutes of time daily. We have clearly seen the, the amount of care and affection that the owner of the house shows towards their plants, the caretaker shows. There's a direct reflection of that in the, in the, in the health of the plants. Uh, this, this might seem very intangible, but there's a real tangible connection to it. differences in growing on a farm and growing in an urban space is usually we grow in containers in pots uh, kiaris of like a like a box or or some sort of a container and uh, what happens when you grow, grow in a container is 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 there is no uh, tilling being done in this case the soil is not moving now the roots of the plants they want a well aeration that they just they just don't want the water or the moisture they also want oxygen air so uh, an, an easy way of uh, doing this is to create the right potting soil. There are some ready mixes available in the market, we also make it, uh, but you can make your own as well. The, the main sort of two or three components that go into it are a good quality compost, about a third of compost. Uh, you can take about a third of uh, 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 this coco peat. Coco peat is the, 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 the byproduct of the coconut husk and, uh, and the last component is something like a vermiculite and a bit of a soil and a bit of a sand. So uh, the last third is comprised of these three things, vermiculite, soil and sand and the remaining third and third is, is compost and uh, coco peat. The compost is primarily functioning as a source of nutrients and coco peat is providing the, uh, the aeration. The fibers of the coconut, they, they don't allow the soil to stick together. So it allows the enough aeration to happen. And vermiculite acts like a sponge. Coco peat is usually available in most uh, gardening stores and nursery stores. 
Uh, Vermicare is not so easily available. Uh, as a company, we're trying to make available all of these things to all of our clients. And uh, this this space where we are at, we, we can people can especially in Delhi at least people can come and buy from us also. But most gardening stores will have coco peat at least and good compost as well. So I came with the idea of growing uh, organically food and uh, just basically helping people get more healthy. As I started growing, I faced a lot of challenges and I mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, eventually I got to the point where we were not selling it to the wholesale mandis, but we got into touch with the direct consumer so that we can deliver it directly. At some point, the farm had uh, about 300 direct customers who were buying from us. We also made a small shop on the farm itself since it was along the highway, so people started buying from that. About four or five years down the road, I started realizing the, the challenges I mentioned earlier, that uh, the consumer didn't know why, where, and the how of food. And to, to make them more aware and in tune with the food, the only way was if they start growing their own. So initially, I started out doing by just doing workshops. We didn't really help people get started by actually going and setting up their gardens. I just did the workshops, educated them. But I soon realized that only about two people out of 20, if they came to a workshop, would actually go and do something about it. They would just hear and go. The, the reason they didn't go back and do it is because they wanted a bit more of a hand-holding. So about a year afterwards, I started helping them also setting it up. And then, they, then soon I realized that it wasn't enough just to set it up, but they also wanted some hand-holding to maintain the garden. Because not everybody knows the intricacies of the cycles of nature, the seasons change, the planting, the seeds. So we started helping them maintain also a little bit with the with this change of seasons, with the change of uh, climate. And about a year ago, I actually shifted to Delhi as well. So, so and then this uh, earlier the company that we had, a Sajiv Fresh, now uh, which we have termed as Edible Roots, uh, came about. I think as a country in this moment, it's it's still very very in the initial. I would say it's in the still very infant stages. I would say actually. Uh, countries like Cuba and Russia actually have assigned plots for each each citizen uh, that they have to grow food on for themselves. If they don't grow, then that land is taken back from them. Honestly, if you start growing, you'll realize that if, even if you have a small terrace of 100 square feet or 500 square feet or 1000 square feet, you can pretty much grow all of your fresh food requirements on it. So having said that, uh, I think uh, the as a city, Bangalore is I think at the f forefront in India. They are the, the citizens over there are the most active in terms of uh, not only not only handling their waste com at home by composting it and using it in their garden, but also growing food out of it. Uh, Delhi also, I've seen, as, as you know, that I've shifted here recently, uh, has shown a lot of keen interest in this. So the, the 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 citizens of Delhi are also very aware about it. They are very, and again, I think it's it's maybe in a way it's driven by the pain because we all know the pollution, the the problems and the challenges with the food around us. So it is coming up, but I think it's a long way to go. I mean, I think, but I'm glad that at least a lot of people are getting into it.